Let's talk about uh, the future. Let's talk about how hopefully in years to come we'll be inspired by our politicians who have the passion, the desire, they're committed to the cause, all for the greater good. That's what we would hope for. But is that what would happen? Uh, we have in the studio this morning uh, a couple of ch- characters. First of all, we have the youth premier, and then we have the youth leader of the opposition, because, of course, coming up, uh, we have this week youth parliament, an opportunity to use the premises when uh, the, uh, the adults have all cleared out, and uh, the youth can fill it with some great ideas that they've been involved with over the past three months. They can uh, write the bills, they can debate the bills, and hopefully legislation will be passed. How easy has it been to do it? Let's talk to Max Riley, who is the youth premier. Joshua Cahill is the youth leader of the opposition. And Ross Keward, who's the CEO of YMCA, the organisation that uh, is so heavily involved in this whole project. And I want to ask you first, Ross, first of all, why are you involved in it? What's the importance and why why YMCA involved? Um, Yeah, Youth Parliament started 16 years ago. And for those who may fondly remember the YMCA. It's sort of evolved over the years and about 16 years ago it became a, a new way to give a chance for young people to experience uh, and develop their own leadership skills and the vehicle to do it really was a, a mock parliamentary environment. So fundamentally for us it's a youth leadership program yeah. and you'll see some young people here who already are leaders and will continue to become leaders and the history over those 16 years has seen a number of young people become uh, civic-minded leaders. We've had people move into local government, yet to have someone actually move mm. into politics in, in WA oh, really? yet. They all but, saw the light during the week, <laughs> clearly. But, our, but the uh, most amazing thing is the person who actually coordinates this whole program for mm. us um, is an ex-youth parliamentarian. So it's amazing mm. how some of the pathways yeah. for these young people um, go both into the Y but also into many other parts of, okay. of, of our society. So let me ask you, Max, first of all, as Youth Premier, is, is your desire to do this as a sort of a, a, a pre-runner to doing it full-time as a, as a career potentially? Oh, James, absolutely not. I feel that <laughs> particularly for many young people, they look at the political system and they think it's quite rough. I think that many young people contemplating a career in politics don't want to expose themselves and their families to sort of scrutiny which they see mm. these days. And I think that's particularly relevant in what we've seen over the past week. So no, this is a part of a grand plan to uh, become a politician. But that, that, that's in interesting you're saying that. So you, you, you're obviously involved in this and you have strong desires to, to make a change. And yet the whole political system potentially is putting you off from going into it. I absolutely believe that this is an excellent program designed to showcase the views of young people and I think it's important that people who have opinions and are young, you know, put themselves forward to contribute those ideas. That being said, again, I feel that particularly with a lot of discussion occurring around politics today, sort of toxic discussions occurring around issues, that that can really put both myself and a lot of other passionate young people off politics as a form of enacting societal change. Um, Josh Cahill, youth leader of the opposition, if that is the case, and you, I'm sure probably you're, you're concurring pretty much with what Max is saying, how do we yep. change the system so that we end up with the right people and the right inspiration and right leadership in politics? I think part of it um, uh, is to integrate youth into more of these issues. And I think that if we can get more politicians to uh, understand and reflect on what youth believe are important through programs such as Youth Parliament, I believe that we'll be able to actually really improve the system that we're trying to uh, get better for Mm. for everyone. And uh, I think that when we can integrate both youth and these politicians together will improve the whole system in general. Do you think if we were starting with a blank piece of paper today, Max, that the system that we have is the one that we would, uh, we would draw up? I think that's a very, very good hypothetical question there, James. I actually don't know the answer to that, and I think anyone who tells you that they could take a tabla rosa and mm. create something on top of it is probably lying to you. That being said, I think that it is important to engage with the current system that we have, and, yeah, I think that in general, whilst it's very easy to denigrate the political system, most of the time it does a good job. It's just that there are some particular aspects mm. of it which turn people away. Um, I want to ask about some of your bills, uh, Josh. You, yes. you, you've been involved, uh, uh, obviously. You're, how, how do you become the the, the, the leader, uh, the sort of the premier and the leader of the opposition? By the way, uh, uh, it, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a, a simple election. I think um, there were we all put our names up for candidacy, and then on the training day we got had a few minutes to discuss what we would like to do as leader. Yeah. 
and then we were elected by our peers. So great, it's pretty good. <laughs> great, and no backstabbing. Uh, no, I hope not. Hope I was thinking about it. No leadership spills over the holidays. Hopefully, oh, that's good. Oh, it's not very realistic, is it? No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Max, how did you become the, the, the actual premier? Oh, uh, similar arrangement with Josh. So, uh, fifty-nine youth parliamentarians are selected every year from all across the state. They're from a diverse um, range of backgrounds. You know, they're from the entire youth spectrum. They're from the city. They're from the bush. Uh, they form into the opposition, which is led by Josh and the government. Uh, I think a few weeks ago, those groups met together and we put our names forward. And yeah, I was lucky enough to be elected Premier. So yes, that's how um, it works at a youth level. Fantastic. I'm not sure if that's... Really have you got the swagger? Uh, you know, it's power gone to your head yet? Or? Do I, do I, well, do I have the ticket to be Premier? I'm not entirely sure at this point in time. We'll see over the next week, won't we? <laughs> okay. Now, how do these uh, bills get put together? How, how do you all, and we, we must stress all because there's 59 of you involved, yes. how, how do you go about creating these? Well, um, I think that the program starts with us being put into committees where we find we're most comfortable talking about, where we have some level of expertise. Uh, For me, I got put in the Mental Health and Disability Services um, Committee, and then we wrote up the Mental uh, Health Services Bill, which is basically aiming to improve the mental health services that we have at the moment for uh, young people in society. Um, each pers- each group has their own bill to be created and then they create those bills and then they'll produce them in Parliament and it'll be a very interesting debate. Good. And, and, and Max, which one are you closest to? Um, I was on the Police and Justice Committee, so essentially our role was to investigate um, how we could improve the relationships between young people and the police and our justice system. We came up with the Police and Community Relations Bill, which essentially establishes uh, a number of 24-hour police stations in high-need areas and reinstates school-based policing officer programs in order to connect people from disadvantaged communities who might not have a positive view of the police with uh, the policing service. Um, in particular, we felt that as young people, this was an important issue considering crime overwhelmingly affects young people, both as people mm. who perpetrate it, but also as victims of crime. And they're also, young people are more likely to be out and about at the sorts of times of the day which aren't served by regular police stations. So that was our... So all of the bills like have a youth, a youth sort of leaning, do they? Mm. They're all obviously involving yes. yourself. Mm. And what's driving it? Is this the passions of, of, of you all? I, I would agree that it would be a lot to do with the passions of each person because I think that the reason they're in these committees is because they're passionate about the idea and that's why they signed up for the program. So I think that the passion and the inspiration and these ideas really drive the um, the issues that they want to talk about. But I mm. think... At the same time, it's also that want to be politically engaged with what's going on. And I think that if we address youth issues, then we show that that political engagement. Max, do you think there's a chance that um, that the senior politicians will be watching carefully and closely? Uh, I certainly hope that some of them are. I think that definitely young people have a great deal to demonstrate and bring to the political debate right now. I think that as a group, young people aren't represented like other groups Mm. are Mm. in politics. Uh, There aren't too many young people in Parliament. That's changing over time. So I definitely think that programs like this are very good at demonstrating the voice of young people and getting their opinions out there. Ross, what's your take on this? Are are they going to be watching, taking note and Uh, and, and maybe taking a few of the pointers from it? uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, interesting what's unique about this parliament sitting to any other parliament sitting is you can twitter so uh, last year was the first time that happened and <laughs> in fact good. it was amazing to see some of the existing politicians jump into the twitter conversation Did they? but so so we do know that uh, many of the uh, uh, parliamentarians who who endorse locally endorse their local candidate in that sense that hopefully they'll actually give them some money to pay for them to come along yeah. um but yeah. um they actually monitor the whole conversation, but also your listeners can monitor the conversation by simply following Youth Parliament um, and on Twitter. Just search it, search the hashtag at Twitter and you'll find Youth Parliament. That's great. W at Perth. And it could be refreshing. You it's know, an re- amazing <laughs> conversation. In fact, unfortunately, the public can't come into to some of it, but I get the privilege of hearing the, the closing debates and the closing presentations. I think what is really great about this program is these young guys may today have a very strong opinion. Um, but in fact, they listen and engage in the debate. And when it comes to voting, it's not uncommon for people to cross the floor. Of course, that's easier when you don't have a party alignment, mm-hmm. but it, they change their minds because yes. they generally listen to what's going on, educate themselves. That's interesting. So, so where are the whips then? No one being whipped into, into, into place. There are ceremonial whips, but yeah. they're lazy in enforcing party discipline. We think it's appropriate, <laughs> that, particularly for young people, that they yeah. be able to express their own conscience on particular matters of um, policy. So, yeah, we have no need for youth political parties. And, and it, wouldn't that yet. be a great introduction, though? You know, if we were going to change one thing in the system, maybe that would be the thing, that, that, that you'd actually end up with a, a freer debate. Oh, I think that 
that um, political parties have a purpose at a senior level. I think that there is an argument to suggest that um, the current party system curtails debate amongst individual members. Uh, I think that particularly for young people with a diverse um, variety of interests and particularly with 59 young people, you're never going to get them all on the mm. same page with the policy that you know it's appropriate to let them express mm. their conscience. Uh, what would be a great week result for you, Josh? You know, should, 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 well, uh, where would it be? I think, think one of the best things for uh, myself as opposition leader would have all of our opposition bills pass. That would be the best thing. I think uh, I'd love to see some of Max's bills pass. I mean... I don't know about that. It depends on how it goes. But uh, I would for sure love to see all four of my uh, my team's bills pass because I think we've put a lot of work and a lot of effort into trying to create some good bills. Are you just a good debater? Um, I wouldn't think I'm just a good debater. I think I'm a good, I am a good debater, but I'm also a good leader. And uh, I think that's an important part. Good answer. Part. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think being a good leader and being able to take control of my, uh, my group um, is yeah. really helpful in these circumstances to try and form a good opposition yeah and and as for you max same sort of thing look obviously i would like all of the people involved in this program to gain a greater knowledge and exposure to the parliamentary process basically i want everyone within my government to develop in the way which they see appropriate i want them to learn more about the political system mm. i want them to have fun i don't want them to get shouted down mm. i think this is a really great program for getting people involved in politics and i congratulate the ymca on running it i would concur very good and the youth premier i suppose your biggest challenge is to get through to the end of the week unchallenged uh, no sort of <laughs> knives in the back on the second day. Well, it is the last sitting week of youth <laughs> parliament for the year, so maybe it is killing season. I'm not entirely sure how that will run. Do you see any threats? Oh, well, you know, you've always got to be cogent on what other people are doing. But, you know, I think I've got the numbers men behind me on this one. <laughs> they're good, aren't they, Ross? They're very good. Now, throwing it all at them, they know what to do. They're, they're, they're well versed. Anyway, I think they've been trained. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful week. Um, when does it all start? Uh, tomorrow? Yes, it's Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so got working on a Sunday. Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Monday you excited? Yeah. yeah, excited? Looking forward to it. I'm oh, very excited. <laughs> Ross, thank you for bringing these two in. It's, it's terrific. Well, maybe the, the, the future is in safe hands. Max Riley, who's the youth premier, is 18. Josh Cahill, who's uh, just 16, the youth leader of the opposition. Thank you both for coming in. Very thank good. You. And Ross Keward, who's the CEO of uh, YMC.